Hello, everyone. My name is Mofi. I'm a developer advocate at Google Cloud. I, my focus area is mostly on Kubernetes and running AI workload on Kubernetes. Um, so quick hands on how many people have heard of Kubernetes or used Kubernetes before. All right, keep those hands raised reason for a second. How many of you have used GKE? If you haven't, drop your hands. Oh, still quite a few number. So GKE is uh, Google's managed Kubernetes. So we're going to talk about uh, Kubernetes, how to run AI workload on Kubernetes, and specifically GKE in this case. When you talk about building cloud-native applications, um, there is Kubernetes probably the first thing a lot of people uh, think about when you think about cloud native application. And when you're talking about AI workload on Kubernetes, uh, I specifically think of three separate use cases. Number one is you have a model that you want to just make sure that other people can access. So the serving and inferencing use cases. Number two is you have a model, but or don't have a model, but have data that you want to train the model with. So you want to run fine tuning or training job, both full fine tuning or lower fine tuning of that case. Okay. And the number three, which is the, probably the most common use case, you have an application and that you want to serve somewhere, right? And that application these days might be talking to something so that access AI-related uh, APIs and other things. And that API could might not even be running in your cluster. That API could be a Gemini API or something like OpenAI API that you're calling from your application. So we want to make sure that all three of these use cases are well served. In that regard, like why would you want to even use Kubernetes for things like this? So if you look at a spectrum of things that are fully self-managed to fully like managed for you, uh, something like Vertex that my colleague just talked about would probably in the farthest end, where you just care about your application, AI data, and models. Everything else is taken care of for you. Your own data center or something like a bare metal server probably will be all the way in the other end, where you manage everything from updating your like Linux distribution, installing, wiring, uh, figuring out how much network bandwidth you need, all that stuff. Kubernetes probably sits somewhere in, in the middle, right? You have a lot of things you can tweak and control, but for the most part, a lot of the upgrade and update gets taken care of. So you have the flexibility of bringing the tooling that you want to bring in, like the library that you want to use, the software you want to use. And once you build a container, that kind of becomes that portable unit of operation that you can take from this cluster to other provider to your own data center that's running Kubernetes. Performance-wise, again, Kubernetes just talks to the underlying infrastructure. So at GKE, we can give you all that necessary resources like GPU and TPU for you to get the best performance for your application that you want to run. And finally, the efficiency is both efficiency in terms of getting the right resources as well as being able to manage an auto-scale environment that can scale down to give you the best cost efficiency to be able to run things at large scale. Now, at Google, even before Kubernetes, we have been doing things with containers for a while now. Uh, we At Google, we have been running containers for roughly 20 years for pretty much all the big applications that we run. And all that institutional knowledge have been baked into our managed service for Kubernetes, which is GKE. We can provide unparalleled scale compared to the rest of the industry at this point, as well as a new mode of operation for Kubernetes called GKE Autopilot, where you don't even have to think about the nodes you're running. You just define the application you want to run in a YAML format, and Autopilot takes care of provisioning the hardware, running your application, and scaling them down when you no longer need them. So we talked about the three mode of operation I think about when you're talking about running AI workload on Kubernetes. So the first one we're going to talk about is taking a model, like Gemma in this case, and fine tuning it. I think we saw an example that uh, Killian just showed to like the notebook. But when you want to take that same experience and somehow package that in a container, the task itself is not that much different. We want to just take the same code, package that in a Docker file, get a container out, and that container then can run in a Kubernetes environment. So we're going to look at an example of fine tuning Gemma on GKE. Before I start the video, which is going to load in a second, uh, uh, you got, in the screen, what you see is the Google Cloud Console for GKE, and I have a Kubernetes cluster with three node pools. Uh, one of the node pools is just your general CPU nodes. Two of the other node pools, the G2 Standard 96 and G2 Standard 8, one of them has eight L4 GPUs, and one of them has one L4 GPU. The one that has eight L4 GPU, that's the one I'm going to try to use to fine tune a Gemma model using some data set from Hugging Face. And the uh, the reason I'm trying to fine tune this model, I'm going to take the pre-trained model of the 2 billion parameter model, but fine tune it using a data set called SQL context. So what that does is if I give it a question about some table and give it a table structure, it should be able to give me some SQL query that I can uh, then run against my database. So I'm going to start the video. 
Uh, so this part goes pretty quickly. So I'm going to select, again, these are the two notebooks that I have with GPUs. And the code is taken from a notebook. I just copied all the codes of the notebook blocks and put it in a Python file. And I'm setting most of the variables that I need, like my LoRa config, if I'm using uh, float point 16, some optimizers. I'm also uh, going to set up the uh, so about the data set that comes in. I'm going to change the data set into some different format that I need, as well as uh, the, the LoRa config, I'm going to have some training arguments. All of this stuff you, are, you have seen if you look, went through the notebook yourself. But again, all of them are now in the single data set file. Also, run the train at the train. After the model training will finish, I will then copy the, I will then combine the model into a single fine tuned model and finally upload that all up to Hugging Face. I will need a Docker file to make that in a container. So that's you see the Docker file there and put that into YAML to talk to Kubernetes. After all of that is done, only thing left to do is to run the command. In real life, this command to, uh, end to finish takes about 33 minutes. But for time's sake, I have sped up the video. So this whole thing is going to end in about 30 seconds. But what you will see if you can read the font, which is not super big, I, I noticed now, is again, the training is happening. I have 5,000 total data set, to total uh, rows in my data set, which is about 5,000 steps. But because I have eight GPUs, you're going to see my total step is actually 625 because each GPU kind of breaks it into each step is about eight steps in total in real time. Uh, in about 33 minutes, This I have my loss function, I have my model created. After that is done, my model weights from the LoRa weights will get combined with my original model and then pushed back up to Hugging Face. And in a second, I'm going to also go to Hugging Face. The last time I had pushed this was about four days ago. But when the video was recorded, the last time I had pushed this was 38 minutes ago, and which updates to now less than a minute ago, so after I finished uploading. If we were to go back to this link, which is moviecode slash gemma 2 bsql you should see that the, the model file was up, updated about four days ago. So that was the first part, right? We fine-tuned our model and then pushed it back to Hugging Face. Now, anybody on the internet can go and grab that model and set up their own serving that will give them a model that is now equipped to handle SQL queries. Now, before we go do that, let's just talk about what all of that kind of as a big picture looks like. At the very bottom layer, we have our accelerators that we want to use. We have our GPUs in this case. We also have TPUs, which are like custom built hardware for doing AI workload like training and fine tuning. And on top of that, we have our Kubernetes platform that is GKE that you can have not only your application running, but as well as AI workload running. On top of that, you can think of different types of AI workload you want to run. You have your training, fine tuning. That's one type of workload that requires a lot of resources for a kind of a long time. And the other side, you have inferencing, which is more things that needs to be running constantly as deployment. So in that case, being able to optimize resources with that if you're using an eight GPU constantly, that's probably more expensive than having smaller GPUs that can do fine tuning, uh, do serving constantly as a, like a deployment. And finally, on top of that, you can bring any kind of tool like your PyTorch, your Keras, other tools in the open source community, as well as closed source that can run on Kubernetes that can give you the complete picture of your AI ecosystem. And as for this release for Gemma from the GK team, we released four different guides that allows you to uh, figure out how to do serving on GKE using open source tool that exists in the community. So we have for GPU, we have VLLM, Hugging Face, TGI, as well as TensorRite LLM on Triton server from NVIDIA. And for TPU, we have the example with SaxML that it can run to see how serving the same model can be a little bit different across these four different options. Now that we, the last thing we're going to talk about is the fine-tuned model that we just pushed up. How do you go about serving that model in GKE? So the four guides I talked about, the one of them guides is serving open models using GPUs on GKE using Hugging Face TGI. TGI stands for Text Generation Inference. I think a previous speaker already talked about that kind of world of serving large language models. So this guide kind of goes through serving Gemma 2B, 2B IT, 7B, and 7B instruction tuned version of the model on TGI. So for us to get started, all we basically need is that YAML that we are using here. But in this case, instead of using the Gemma 2B model directly, we're just going to swap that out for the model we just tuned, the model we have under Murphy codes, SQL, something, something. So we'll, we can copy this whole YAML over to there. And we're just going to replace this value with the value here, Murphy calls Gemma to be SQL. And after the, all, the, if the, all the secrets are in the right places, all you need to do then is run this application. 
slowly type that. And again, this process to download and set up serving takes about four minutes. Again, through the magic of uh, video editing, we can get this done in about four to five seconds. But the basic idea is the same. You deploy, it goes to Hugging Face, downloads the model, sets up all the weights and tokenizer in the right place so that it's ready as a server for us to go then make HTTP query against it. Now I set up a, like a port forwarding over there so that I can call it from my local host. You could also set it behind the load balancer if you want to get the same experience across the internet. Now, I talked about how this data set was about SQL. So the user prompt I have is some question about a data. And I'm also providing the context of what does the database look like. So I have a database that is create table uh, farm of some data set. And then when I make this query against my table, the model that previously that was just giving random answers, now it is it can answer things like give me a select average working horses uh, from my table. So again, I haven't actually tested, but like from the looks of it, uh, first glance, it looked like it's going to work. But if it doesn't, I can always go back and fine tune it even more to fit the need I have. So in this short seven to eight minute video, we kind of saw the whole flow of you have data, you take that data and fine tune any model that you want to, and then push that model up to Hugging Face, and then also set up serving so that not only you, but other people also can take advantage of a fine tuned model to use in an environment they want to. So if you can set up like a load balancer against it, other people on the internet can be using it. Also, locally from your cluster, other applications can hit that endpoint to get data out. So we're super excited to see what you will all be building with this kind of tools. Again, in a GK cluster, you can have a node with like a huge amount of GPU, not just L4s, but H100, A100s, to fine tune really big models, not only from like fine tuning with LoRa, but also like full fine tuning or training and get similar results and great results. <laughs>